But then it can't be, it's odd, it says odd, which is really weird. This yeah. is for design to mess you up. It's going to have to be 53, not 54. Yeah, I counted it was 12. Yeah, it was 12. Okay, here's what's, here, let me see if I can figure out a general rule. All i got to do is figure out a general rule first, right? Okay, um, what is it changing by? Two. Two. Okay, so my a sub n, my nth term, is going to be 2n, because if it's odd terms, it's going up by 2 every time. All right, so it's going to be 2n. What would, these things start at 31, what would my, um, I have to add to make my first term 31 to um, 2n? Uh, 29. 29. This way, a sub 1 is going to be um, 2 times 1 plus 29 is 31. Does that get me the first odd term between 30 and 54? Yeah. Yes. Okay, what does n have to be for this to get to 53? When does 2n plus 29 equal 53? 2 because 4 plus 29. I'm going to go ahead and work it out Algebra 1 style. Um, this is uh, 24. Four, 24. Yep, James is correct. Well, n well. equals 12. Oh, well, I thought you were okay. saying 33. So 53 will be the 12th term. All right, so, what they're, so a sub 1 is 31. a sub 12 is 53. Counting's good, but I'm trying to prove it. And a sub n, any term, is 2n plus 29. And now yesterday we said... Is there anything else you want to like throw in this equation that throws me off even more? <laughs> uh, I could put in some decimals and maybe some no. imaginary numbers. Um, yes. Uh. Um, S, this is, according to little Carl Frederick Gauss, the sum of the nth terms is n over 2, a sub 1 plus a sub n, is that the general formula? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so in this case, it's 12 over 2 times 31 plus 53, which is 6 times 54, 84? Yeah. So, Connor, when you added all this together, did you get 504? Yeah. Life is good. What the hell did you pull that last formula? Where does 6 come from? This was in the notes. Oh, no, 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 no. Yesterday, 12 over 2. <laughs> I see it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Vaguely. I just didn't know what the hell it was for. Really no now you know. Uh, no, I don't. No, not in any way, shape, or form. Right. So, this is a good summary of yesterday. Why okay. Is it never, like, divided by 3? Like, why, see, why is this getting easier this month? Honestly, because you, the last two days it's been like learning a new language, and now you're getting proficient in it. Okay. It's similar to a language you used to know, called algebra. <laughs> All right? But... Once you get into counting, counting is so much weirder than you think. It begins with that whole idea of the, the fence post issue we were talking about. So you use this for what? What, what do you call this exactly? Some of an arithmetic series. I'm calling it the little boys method. Uh, the little yes, Carl Frederick Gauss right, method. This is the sum of an arithmetic series. And now the two simplest series in the world are arithmetic and geometric. After that, they get really hard. Like Today we're Euclidean and. We're not going, they don't even have to go there. But, so now we're going to do geometric. So these are the new notes beginning now. Okay. So we're going to do a geometric series. Zeno's paradox kicks in. Now, Martina, um, is, since we're just building that, since we're starting to build on a common vocabulary now, I'm hoping this will get even easier to add new stuff to it today. Monday, we're leaping to a whole new level. Um, okay, geometric series. For an arithmetic series, it goes up by a sum or difference each time. Up by a sum or down by a difference each time. Geometric series, we're introducing multiplication. Okay? Introducing multiplication. So, the geometric series always looks something like a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n. It always looks something like that. r is called the common ratio. Here's why. Really simple geometric series would be 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, dot, dot, dot. What's going on here? Yeah, multiplying by 2 over and over again. So the common ratio, 4 to 2, is a ratio of how much? 1 to 2. 1 half. 1 to 2 going this way, 2 to 1 going that way, 1 half or 2, depending on which way you're going. 
4 to 2 will give me a ratio of 2. 8 to 4 will give me a ratio of 2. 16 to 8 will give me a ratio to 2. See where I'm going with this? Yeah. Each term divided by the previous one gives you the same number. Hey, we're doing ratio. Over to, well, you don't have to think of it as ratios so too much. So would the common ratio just be 2? Yeah. In this case, R equals 2 and A sub N equals 2 R. No, to, to R, like up. <laughs> pirates. We're doing pirates now. And it's not even that, it's just to N. I wrote it wrong anyway. No, this is the N. So your R You're right. is your. Woo! That's why. Adina's correct. That's why I said it. It's to R. R, that's why you. Adina's R. trying to correct me in pirate speak, and hey, I obviously Adina, don't speak do it. Do you know how much it costs in pirate to get their ear pierced? No. A buccaneer. Um, a buccaneer. A buccaneer is not a name for private. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, in this case, it's two to the nth is the pattern. Wait, why is it a sub one equals two? <laughs> Pardon? Why is it two? I mean, a sub one equals two. Because a sub one, shh, guys, is two to the first. A sub two will be two squared. A sub 3 will be 2 cubed. Now that Adina's has corrected me, I uh, believe this sequence will get me all of these. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we're multiplying by 2 over and over and over again. Okay. Um, Can I hear another pirate joke? No. 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 <laughs> but thank you. It was, uh, there's another one that was on the back of the No. no. I like it. it. No. Guys, we're going to do a proof today. One of my. I haven't had much time for these. <gasps> proof. But we're going to do one. Um, I don't normally get to. I know I've been doing proofs this year as much with you guys, but this is actually one of the most beautiful ones, and it leads to a really odd idea, and it's fairly simple. Um, so I want, I want you guys to not doubt a bit of this. Um, the, uh, the, uh, what's at the end of this proof? Yes, it is. Okay, so. Great. Adding terms. Adina, Lauren, you're closer to the microphone than I am. <laughs> okay, so stop. Adding terms of a geometric series. It's going to look something like this. You're going to have your first term. Your second term is going to be your first term multiplied by a common ratio, right? Yeah. Whatever it is. Of course. Your yeah. third term is going to be your first term multiplied by the common ratio twice. Like over here, one way to look at 8 is it's what you get when you multiply 2 times 2 times 2. Yeah. Your next term after that is going to be r cubed, and it's going to keep following this pattern. We started out without an r, uh -huh. so if I have n terms, I'm going to get to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. This was in the homework two yeah. or three nights ago. Yes, it was. This was to preview your thinking about this. And this is going to equal the sum out n terms of a geometric Wait, series. Why the n minus 1? Why don't it just be n? Because we started with no r, and then we went r to the first here. So we're going to have one less r than we do terms in this sequence. Uh, I'm confused. Why? why, why Wait, no. what? Okay, it ends at n minus 1. Do you guys see an r here? No. So if I go out n terms, I didn't have an r on the first one, so I'm only going to get multiplied n minus 1 times instead of n times. Why didn't you have an r on the first one? Yeah. Um, because this is just wherever start I start with. One, it'll be like I'm 1 minus 0. Wait, isn't it, the, but isn't like the r, r there uh, 1? No, this is r to the zero. Yeah, but then r would r to the zero just be zero? No, r to the zero is one. Anything raised to the zero power is one. Okay, what were you doing in seventh grade? <laughs> Memorizing pi. Okay. Great use of your time. No, no I get it now. Okay. Okay. Now. I don't understand that part, but I understand this part now. 